panic option. So if I just click SOS, if I now open the door by moving the sensors apart. Loft door opened. Lights come on. Next one, close the blind. Then we've got the lighting on my console gaming setup turning on. So, so useful. Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the latest range of smart products from a company called Ajax Online. It's their Zignito range and they have a number of different Zigbee based products and even their own Zigbee hub. So ideal if you're starting your own smart home as they have some starter packs to get you going or even worth getting if you're after some additions to your existing smart home as the items are compatible with some Zigbee hubs. For example, Philips Hue, Smart Things, etc. But with certain hubs, you may notice reduced or missing functionality. So do make sure you double check on their website for compatibility so you don't end up wasting your time. So details for all the items I'll be showing are in the description below, including purchasing links. So the first thing worth mentioning is that there's a big advantage to using Zigbee based product over standard Wi-Fi based product as only the hub is connected to the internet, which in turn connects to the cloud servers. But in contrast with Wi-Fi devices, each device is connected to the cloud servers and this in turn creates additional load on your router which can cause your Wi-Fi to get unstable if you had a lot of these devices and that's why Zigbee devices are ideal and they have a longer range than Wi-Fi devices. So I've got a small selection of their range I'll be setting them up trying them out and hopefully it'll give you an idea if it's suitable for your purposes. Let's make a start at getting this set up so we're going to begin with the Zigbee hub in the packaging you get a quick start guide which is in English you get a one meter ethernet cable you get a 30 centimeter USB type A to micro USB. You get a power adapter, the output on this is five volts, one amp. And finally the hub. So very compact in size and looking all the way around, there's nothing much other than a reset button, micro USB connection point and the ethernet connection point. Underneath, you just got four rubber pads, to stop it slipping on the surface. So to get this set up, simple as just plug in an ethernet cable here. The other end goes into your router and a micro USB cable to power it. Let's make a start at setting this up. So coming over to my Android phone, the device and all the items with it are compatible on Tuya and Smart Life apps. So if you haven't got it installed, obviously install it, register an account. And then if I start up Smart Life, you can see I've got a room here, loft, and I can just click add device to add a device. And if we go to gateway control, the one we're after is gateway Zigbee. And now we need to just power on the device. So I've connected the ethernet, power's plugged in as well. Let's power it on now. Two green lights come on and they're flashing away. And now both the green lights are on. If I just confirm that next to that, and there you go, it's found it. Base station light, add that. And there you go, it's added in successfully, done to that. And it's just highlighting here, this device is a security device with alarm notifications. To ensure you receive the notifications, please click test to check you have turned on the corresponding permissions. Let's click test next to that, done, and there you go. So this is one of the things about this device. If I come back for a second, I actually have a new icon in the corner here, which is smart security. And this is where you can arm and disarm the device. So it's quite advanced because a lot of hubs out there don't have that functionality. And it's quite cool they're giving that with the hub. Now, if I come onto the device, you can see it there, base station light. And this is the basic interface on there. Going into edit, you can rename it and the standard sort of options you get in Smart Life. Back from here. Now, the only thing you need to do next is to start adding in your devices. So I've got all these different sensors. Let me get them all opened up and I'll show one of them getting added in. Got the door sensor here and on here you can see there's two pull tabs. So one here, pull that out and another one down there. And now you should be in a situation where that's flashing. If it's not, you can use a pin to reset it. So it's just a matter of holding it in there and there you have it. You've got a small blue light flashing away there. And now coming onto the app, if I click add sub device, this is just asking if the device is in a flashing state. Confirm that, let's give it a moment. And there we have it, it's added in. So if I now open, should get an alert and there you go. Doors opened and doors closed. So it's as simple as that to get a device added in. So let me do the same for the other devices now. So I've installed all the items, you can see all of them down below here. And let's begin by initially looking at the alarm side of things. And I think this is one of the best features they've got here. Now, looking at the shield, if I click on that, you can see the current status of the alarm, so it's currently off. So you've got two buttons down below, one's an at home one, and the other one's left home. So if you're at home and you wanted just certain sensors to be active, then you can just click that. And if you've left the house completely and you wanted all the sensors to come on, you can just click left home. Now looking in settings here, going into alarm mode, you can actually change which settings are in which grouping. So if I look at stay, 
you can see here just the door and window sensors active back from here looking in a way you can see both the PIR and door sensors active. So it's good having that flexibility so you can pick what's in and out of the grouping and the interface is quite easy to manage. Back from here and then entry and exit delays. So looking on stay, you can have a delay on here when you activate it. So you can see it can go up to 180 seconds and the same with entry. And if we go to away, and this is where you're leaving your house, a lot of alarms, so standard alarms would have a delay as you're leaving the house, so it doesn't activate straight away. So you can see here, goes from zero to 180. So a lot of flexibility available on this. And now coming back, let's activate it. So in the at home mode. Now, because there's no delay, it comes on straight away and you've got the indicator there saying it's activated in at home mode. And now if I open the door, there you go, the alarm's activated, I'll disarm it. Now, if you looked at the icon previously, if you did have any Smart Life to your cameras, you can quickly jump onto them as well. So it's nice, it's got that facility too. So now if I click left home, you can see the countdown happening. And this is a scenario, probably more old school way of doing an alarm where you've got a panel in your house, you press the button and you're just leaving your house and you're locking up. Not really required for this, but again, a nice facility to have available. You could have, for instance, a tablet where you activate it when you're leaving your house, you leave your tablet in your house and then you leave the house and there you go. Now it's saying the system's armed and you've left the home. So it's as simple as that to use it. Now, if I click off for a moment, the other nicety about the system is the remote you get with this. So with this, you've got a, a panic option. So if I just click SOS, there you go. Instant picture on your phone that it's been activated. You can just turn it off by clicking that. You've also got the home and leave home options on here. So clicking that just to show, there you go. It's activated it, turn it off, press that. There you go. Countdown's kicked in, so it's getting ready to activate the alarm and I'll deactivate it from here. So really useful having the remote, no need to go into the app. I think that's so useful to have. You don't always wanna keep going into an app to arm, disarm things. So I think that's really good to have that. Next, let's activate the alarm and see the sound levels from the siren. Ninety two point two decibel. So pretty loud. Next, let me briefly show all the options available for each of the devices. So first of all, let's start off with the door window sensor. So looking in settings over here, standard sort of options where you can rename things, move the room it's in, third party controls it's compatible with, and the standard sort of things available with Smart Life to you. Then you can see a notification telling you the state of the door sensor. So if I open it now, you can see it's told you it's in an open state back to close state and even gives you a message telling you that. Then you've got a record. So this will tell you the, the log of events happening. So when it's opening and closing and going down here, you can see there's quite a few. Then you've got smart. This is where you can create your own smart scenes. If I click on the plus icon, clever thing about this is you can get the device interacting with other things. So for instance, I can set a condition where the door sensor's open and I can get it, for instance, turning on a light. So if I go to run device, smart lighting 12, which is this light here, go over there and turn it on next to that, save that. And now if I open the door, there you go, the light turns on. Quite a cool way of doing things. You can even set timers on that. So after a certain period, it just automatically turns off. And then coming down below, you've got set tells you details about it, so battery levels at 100%. You can get a message to tell you the battery is low, and this is where you can get messages to tell you if the door's been opened or closed. So you don't have to have that notification come through, you can customize that. And interestingly enough, you've even got the option to buy a subscription where you can get a text message coming through to your phone, or even a phone notification. If I click on buy, you can see the pricing here, and you can see for yourself, 30 days is £1.20, but that's for 20 notifications, and at the bottom, you've got 100 notifications for five pounds. And let's see the other one for phone notification. And on here for 10 calls, it's one pound and 50 calls is three pound 90. So a useful thing to have if you're after that, if you didn't want to just rely on your mobile data and re receiving an alert on there, you can get alerts via text and phone. And that's all the options you have for the door sensor. Let's move on to the PIR. Similar things on this, settings are similar. 
and third party control wise it's only the Amazon so it's compatible with got the log here as well so you can see a log of activity you've got smart same as the other one you can add in so for the PIR sensor you could say put it in your hallway if there's activity turn the light on so it doesn't have to be used just for an alarm it is dual purpose all these devices back from here settings and a similar thing again back again back again let's look at the water leak sensor so it just tells you the state you get a record there if things are okay or not and the way this works you just place it on the floor where you think there could be a potential leak and if these sensors pick up any water you'll get alerted straight away so quite a useful thing to have if you're in a say for instance a flood risk area or even if you wanted to put it underneath your sink in case you're worried of there being a potential leak and same things again you can see settings wise it's not compatible with the google or the amazon side of things looking in smart same thing again you've got the ability to activate other things so you can see there flooding detection state water immersion alarm so if it does detect water you can get other things happening for instance a siren going off lights flashing away nice bit of customization available back from there back again and then in set standard things again now let's look at the indoor siren it tells you a state on there a record two on this so you've got the log of when it's been going off smart so again you can link it into other things if it does go off you can get it doing things clicking on plus you can set a condition for it to go off so again you could have it as even an indication someone's coming to the house so if the doors open you can get the siren just giving an indication sort of like what you'd have in a shop for instance looking in settings so similar items again and you can even change the alarm time on here you can see you can keep going and going and let's keep going wow so it just keeps going really there doesn't seem to be a stop point on there so that's good so you can have it going on for long periods looking at the security remote control you got a record of what's been happening when it's been armed disarmed and when the sos is pressed intelligent linkage so smart scenes again you could link it in to get doing additional things and then settings wise similar things again back from here looking in settings there no integration with the google or amazon side of things and that's all you have available on this now coming on to the wireless mini switch so these are great switches to have so you can set them up to do whatever things you want them to do so programmable switches so if i click add intelligence add a condition so there's three options on this a single double and long press on there so if i click on single click in the task device select the light and i could say on that on and off if i confirm that confirm that save it just call it test save on that so now if i press the button press it again turns off so how cool is that a simple way to control tech and you're not limited to just one item you can just keep adding items into the list of control so if you had a room full of spotlights you could have a single click for one set of spotlights and another double click for another set to turn them on and off it's a very useful button to have and if i look in edit you can see it's not compatible with the google or the amazon side of things but the other standard options are available in here now looking at the scene switch so there's four buttons on this one and that's that one there and a similar thing again you can program it to do different things and very useful to have and the concepts the same again add program you can just add your condition and the task you want it to carry out so a similar thing again i can set a condition and you've got three click options a so single double and long press so identical to the mini switch but you just got four options available on here now coming over to the light we have so there's different options you have so in the zignito range you can get screwing bulbs or even the bayonet fittings and the facilities are all the same one here so if i click the button here you can turn it on you've got the rgb option here so you can flip between different colors brightness levels are good color quality is good on here as well and as part of the app you've got a music sync option and that will work off your voice or any sounds going in the room but there's no microphone on the device it uses a microphone on your phone test one two three test one two three not sure how accurate it is like you can see it's just flashing away like crazy looking in edit is compatible with amazon and google side of things and the same again same sort of options available and that's it that's all the devices and you can see for yourself a lot's possible with them and the most impressive thing for me is the fact the security 
side of it, how flexible it is, and it's nice even having the remote with this. Now some cool functionality with the devices, with the door sensor and the PIR, you can link it with the Amazon side of things and their routines. So looking in my one, I've got two routines set up. One is for the loft door being opened and someone in the loft. If I now open the door by moving the sensors apart. Loft door opened. It's so very useful if you wanted to monitor an area and just be informed if someone's entered the area or opened the door. The scene switch and the smart button are so useful to have. The fact you can program it in to do whatever you want. So for example, in my studio here, if I move the camera to the side, I've got a smart light switch there. I've got smart blinds and I've got some smart lighting on my console gaming setup. So first of all, if I press the button here, lights come on, next one. Close the blind, there you go. Then we've got the lighting on my console gaming setup turning on. So, so useful. So with smart scenes, you can program it to do anything you want within your app itself. So in summary, really impressed with the Zignito range from Ajax Online and a great solution to go for if you were considering starting your smart home as they have a number of starter kits to get you going and adding additional items is simple too as you've seen for yourself. The hub can handle up to 128 devices, which is more than enough. And even if you had an existing smart home, the devices are compatible with other hubs too. Negatives wise, it would have been great if the scene switch and quick button could activate a Amazon routine, but don't be surprised if this is available pretty soon. So there you go. I hope this video has helped anyone thinking of purchasing the Zignito range. Details for all the items are in the description below, including purchasing links. Hang around for the end cards as there'll be more smart tech videos. Drop me a like as it really does help the channel out. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.